the error or fault code PC08 in air conditioning can be related to an excess current in the equipment. Let's go over the recommendations. To solve this error code, starting from the easiest procedure to the more complex ones. 1. Disconnect the equipment from the power supply for several minutes. 2. Reconnect the equipment and observe if the error disappears. 3. Check the cleanliness of the outdoor unit or condenser. 4. Verify the correct operation or rotation of the outdoor unit's fan to ensure there is sufficient airflow. The hot air coming out of the outdoor unit should be able to escape easily. 5. If the error persists, check with a multimeter if the power supply voltage is normal. 6. If the equipment was recently charged with refrigerant gas or recently installed, there is a possibility that there is an excess of refrigerant gas. Remember that with our 410A and our 32, the pressure should be around 120 pounds per square inch. 7. Compressor activation problems can be related to failures in electrical connections or false contacts. Check the condition of all the cables. 8. There can be electrical problems inside the compressor. To diagnose the problem, disconnect the compressor and, with a multimeter in the own scale, measure the electrical resistance between the pairs of pins on the compressor connector. All the values obtained should be equal and should never indicate infinity. 9. Measure the electrical resistance between each pin and the compressor casing using the Megam scale. It should never show a value of electrical resistance. It should always indicate infinity. This rules out issues of current leakage to the ground. 10. Now let's focus on the electronic controller of the outdoor unit. To do this, observe if its indicator LEDs light up or blink. 11. If the LEDs light up or blink, it may indicate that the board is generating continuous voltage, and it is recommended to focus on the IPM circuit, which is responsible for distributing this generated voltage. If no LEDs light up, it is recommended to focus on the PFC circuit, which generates the voltage. 12. When the LEDs do not light up, to check the PFC circuit, make sure that the continuous voltage appears within the board, especially the voltage at the output of the PFC rectifier bridge. When the equipment is powered by 110 volts AC after the rectifier bridge, the voltage should be about 150 volts DC, and when the equipment is powered by 220 volts AC after the rectifier bridge, it should be about 300 volts DC. 13. If the continuous voltage after the rectifier bridge is correct, now, without powering the board, check for electrical continuity between the input and output of the PFC circuit coil or reactor. 14. Verify the correct values of resistances present in the PFC circuit, as well as the condition of the diode. Also, visually inspect and use a capacitance meter to check the condition of the capacitors and observe electrical continuity on the board's tracks. 15. Check the condition of the PFC circuit IGBT transistor. 16. To check the IPM electronic module, follow these steps. 1. Disconnect the equipment from the power supply. Remember that capacitors can store current. Use a multimeter on the DC voltage scale to measure across the capacitors and ensure they are discharged. 2. Locate the IPM electronic circuit. The IPM electronic circuit is covered by heat dissipating fins. 
Its pins are connected via three independent tracks and an electrical connector to the three compressor pins. 3. Positive Power Supply Identify the high-voltage positive power supply of the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the positive track from the largest high-voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 4. Negative Power Supply Identify the negative track from the capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the negative track from the largest high-voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 5. Identify the output points UVW. These can be identified by following the tracks from the compressor connectors to the IPM electronic circuit. 6. Set the multimeter to the diode scale. 7. The IPM electronic circuit is internally composed of six IGBT transistors, each containing a diode, that we will test. Let's start with the integrity test of the first three diodes. A. Place the black probe of the multimeter on the positive input of the IPM electronic circuit. B. Use the red probe to measure the point U V W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be around 0.45 volts for each measurement. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin U V W should yield practically the same reading. Let's proceed with the integrity test of the last three diodes. A. Place the red probe of the multimeter on the negative input of the IPM electronic circuit. B. Use the black probe to measure the points U V W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be similar to those obtained previously. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin, U, V, W, should yield practically the same reading. <laughs>